We're driving a 2023 Land Rover Defender. Coming up, we're going to share a Defender feature that is killer that we wish was in our Bronco. But first, information explosion. The Defender 130 is a lengthier rendition of Defender that's all new for 2023. Let's begin with interior. It's super playful and rugged in here, which is a combo I really dig. We've got Torx bolts. I said that like there's a graphic that goes with it. There I can make not. you a sh one. As opposed to what? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know what to expect. The usability of the space is fantastic. Starting with right here where you could add a phone and there's a little port for it. The door storage is ample. One criticism though, if you put a vertical beverage in the door, it's going to fall over and spill everywhere. It's going to get moist in here. Mm -hmm. It's not what it sounds like. You got a pass through, taller object you can place in here, lower storage area with fairly deep center console storage. And while ours doesn't have it, you can get the optional refrigerator that goes in here that we experienced recently and loved in the Range Rover. You do have a little nook here where the grab handle is. And I think that's uh, gonna be a sauce pocket. Maybe I disagree. I think if you put a sauce here, it would slide right out. I know there's a tiny little ledge there, but I don't think it's enough to hold it, especially with the way you drive. You gotta know I dial it down to like maybe a seven out of 10 when I'm dipping my nugs. The uh, entire interior, by the way, has enough soft materials that it does feel, you know, elevated. I'm going to describe it as plush and rugged. If we were a plush and rugged morning team, who would be plush and who would be rugged? <laughs> I know I'm definitely not rugged, so I guess that makes me plush. I guess that makes me oh, rugged. I'm literally plush right now. <laughs> Hey Plush, how do you find seat comfort? <laughs> well, rugged, it's a little too rugged for me. <laughs> little firm? Little firm. I find it firm but comfortable and I do like the adjustability and I do like the lateral support that I'm getting in my shoulder region um, that holds, holds me in place without constricting my arm movements while I steer. One challenge I had with the interior is the climate controls. Personally, I don't care for dual use buttons. The climate controls are also the off-road controls and you... And they're also the seat heater controls. <laughs> yes. I felt like I had to be looking at it actively to figure out what I was doing. It does feel kind of clever because you've got two knobs and they do a bunch of different things. More exposure will make you used to this, but uh, it is initially a little bit confusing. Now the big deal with the Defender 130 is that is the largest rendition of Defender. We've got a third row back there. You actually can get a third row in the Defender 110, which is the middle size, but I suspect there's not much cargo space after that third row when you're using it. And it can only seat two, whereas this third row can seat three. Can now, it though? <laughs> Good question, sweetie pie. Okay, I found the second row a bit difficult to move out of the way, and then the aperture to get into the third row is pretty narrow. I think that's more of a kid-sized operation. Now, if you are an adult and you get back there, I think headroom is good. Knee room is just barely workable. The challenging spots for me are in the outboard positions, because there's like a little bulkhead that moves your feet out of where your legs want them to go. And then, if for some reason you're a grown man and you find yourself in the middle position there is just not enough seat bottom it's got these uh, scalloped out sections for the seat belts and my ass is just too ample to fit in that space the middle position really is a kid size zone Climbing out of the third row, I do wish there was a rear side grab handle that would make that operation a little bit easier. Speaking of operation, sliding the second row seat back into position, I found it a little bit difficult. It doesn't seem like the kind of thing a kid could operate on their own. Now, if you find yourself in the second row, things look much brighter. Uh, head, knee, uh, foot space are all good. You do have a slide and tilt function, so you can dial in your amount of comfort, or if you're really generous, you can slide forward for um, the people behind you. And I'm very very impressed with that center second row position. I would actually be willing to sit in that middle position. Oh, I thought of one more complaint. Trying to get into the third row, it's gonna be very difficult for you to do with a child seat installed. So if you got one kid, put it on this side so you can still get to the third row on that side. And if you have two kids, I guess maybe you could uh, fold down that middle position and they could kind of crawl awkwardly to the third row that way. Once again, it pays to have one child. Wave to the camera child. Hey. hey. In the beginning of the video, we teased that there was a feature on the Defender that we think is killer and would love in our Bronco. That feature is 
a front row middle seat. Now it's not available on the Defender 130, but on the two smaller body sizes, you can. And I think that would be great because then we could have our uh, hand-waving child right up front here with us. How adorable would that be? <laughs> Moving rearward to the cargo area, you got a uh, swing gate, uh, just like we've got on the Bronco, so we're pretty comfortable with that. Behind the third row, there are 15.3 cubic feet of space, which is not enough room for, let's say, eight people's worth of luggage, but you do have roof rack options. More than likely, you're gonna have that third row folded down, in which case you have 35.8 cubic feet of space, which is um, plenty generous. One challenge is that it is not a flat load floor, and if you uh, drop the second row, it's like uh, going over the Alps. I mean, if you're like a mouse on a motorcycle. <laughs> Kiddo, how do you find getting into this vehicle, specifically trying to get into the third row? It's tall, but I can get in without any help. No sweetie stuff. That's true. There's no step to assist, but she's a big girl, so she's making it work. And what about getting the booster seat installed? In the second row, there's a latch flap covering the latch points. That's small and easy to move out of the way. In the third row, there's nothing covering the latch points, but they're a little bit high, so it's a little bit difficult to get them installed. As for safety, neither the NHTSA nor IIHS have rated the Land Rover Defender, but you do have the active suite of automatic emergency braking, lane departure warning, and blind spot warning that comes standard. Family, what do we think? Is the Land Rover Defender family friendly? Yeah. Rich family friendly. That's a really good reminder um, for our family friendliness. We are now taking into account price. And if it costs more than $50,000 in our recommended trim, that's for rich people. Rear window test. <laughs> Almost all the way down. So close. High five. Bunk. Armrest test. Driving in a comfortable eight and four, it's a little bit of a reach to the inboard and outboard armrest with my hand still on the uh, steering wheel, but I can make it work. Do have some stitching on the edge here, but I have a, a little bit of give outboard. It's a little bit softer. I'm gonna go 65% inboard, 70% outboard. Hey. Would you like to see more videos like this where we review cars as a family plus the occasional helicopter adventure? If so, you're welcome to subscribe. Style! Very quickly, let me thank the sponsor for today's video, Flying Eyes Sunglasses. I'm gonna talk about one thing and one thing alone. They weigh next to nothing. How do I know that? Because I weighed them versus my old aviators that I uh, had before Flying Eyes existed. They're literally half the weight. Use your imagination and you can think about how that would have implications for all day comfort. If you're curious why Flying Ice is the lightest weight, most comfortable eyewear we've ever experienced both in our normal lives and flying in the helicopter, click the link in the description below. And if you're ready for aviation grade eyewear, you can use the promo code MICA to save 10% on Flying Eyes. I love the front, varied grading round headlights that recall the earlier round headlights and the front headlights also look very much like they have eyelashes which makes the car look cute the roundness of the rear fender combined with how flat it is when you look at it straight on and i love those squirrel girl tail lights i do not envy the land rover team because they had to basically reimagine an icon i think they did as, as good a job as they could recasting the defender which is a very rugged kind of vehicle very utilitarian into a modern context. There are some inauthentic bits, let's say uh, the pattern on the hood. Previously, that meant you could like walk on it. Don't walk on that. <laughs> But I do like the boxy profile, and I do like the fact that they offer the Defender in three different sizes. So there's the 90, which is the short stubby one, there's the 110, which looks normal, and then there's the 130 that we're driving that looks pretty darn lengthy. I also really like that the Defender is extremely customizable. There's various style packs, and like you can get contrasting roof colors, all sorts of accessories. You can truly make the Defender the vehicle of your dreams. And if your dreams involve adding a bunch of stuff to your car, <laughs> Land Rover would love to have your business. Overall, we like the look of the Land Rover Defender, but what do you think? Do you like the Defender? If so, if no, tell us in the comments section, in motion! Driving the Land Rover Defender, it feels very much like the Range Rover we drove not too long ago, which is calm, composed, and quiet, which is particularly interesting because I think the Defender uh, of the past was 
the exact opposite of all those things. Part of the refinement we're feeling here is the standard adaptive air suspension that comes on the 130. It's optional on other Defender trims, but it does a really good job of smoothing out the road. As far as steering is concerned, there's sort of a smooth, <laughs> uh, effortless quality. I think it feels relatively confident as you drive through corners. One thing I'm noticing here is that we're driving the uh, inline six cylinder engine. It's a three liter, and uh, I'm just gonna floor it. Whee! Huh, well that took a long time to get that downshift. But in terms of overall power, uh, I think there's plenty to work with here. I will offer some praise to the transmission though, in that shift quality is very transparent. As you drive around, you just don't think about what the transmission is doing. All right, that's what I think, but what does Sweetie think? Evie's at the wheel, she's departing, and she's going to floor it or something close to that as we make our way out here. Oh God! <laughs> Wee. How do you feel about that off the line power? Ooh, I feel really good about the way it felt and sounded. Brody. <sighs> Uh, this is the biggest Defender. Do you find it unmanageable or are you okay doing this? I'm okay doing this. I'm not sure why. Can I make a guess? Yeah. I think it doesn't feel unmanageable because it, it hasn't gotten wider, it's just gotten longer. So you just oh. have more vehicle behind you. Uh, dimensionally here, it doesn't feel that huge. You're right, it doesn't. Any issues with steering or does it feel good? The steering feels good. And what about visibility? Any challenges? The only issue I'm having with visibility is when that second row headrest is up, it blocks the last window. Well, thank heaven, blind spot warning comes standard. Overall though, are you feeling comfortable driving the Land Rover Defender? I am. All right, sweetie is inexplicably comfortable. I'm getting back in the driver's seat. In total, the Defender has a sophisticated on-road demeanor, but one question you're probably wondering is, what's that thing like off-road? Let's find out. We've come to the Museo branded articulation trail to get a little taste of what the Defender is like off-road. We're not gonna get too crazy because this is 86 grand worth of vehicle, four-wheel drive. We do have standard in the Defender. It also has a two-speed transfer case. In the uh, version we're driving with the adaptive air suspension, it'll raise up high enough for 11.5 inches of ground clearance. It'll also forward just shy of three feet worth of water. And I like that you've got the uh, water fording visual in here. We've got a variety of drive modes to play around with let's just go over here into auto we're just gonna let the land rover defender figure it all out now the version we're driving has the optional advanced off-road package which adds a couple of features one all-terrain progress control which is basically like cruise control off-road i have zero interest in that I've come here to be involved, not to let the car take care of it completely. The other is Terrain Response 2, which gives us those six drive modes, including the automatic mode, and there's also a configurable mode. The uh, exemplary ride quality that we experience on-road also helps with off-road comfort. Now here is the moment. We've got uh, a dip on the right, followed by a dip on the left, and I'm guessing we're gonna get a tire or two in the air. Before we do that, let's talk about differentials. We bought our Bronco, it had a locking rear differential, we knew that's what it had. Trying to figure out the differential situation with the Land Rover Defender is shockingly difficult. I know that there's some lock function because I can see it in the center screen uh, here in the vehicle. And I also know that there's a locking rear differential available because it's mentioned in the owner's manual. But determining what that is on the configurator is extremely difficult. Is the electronic active differential the center diff or is that the rear diff? And if you can't find out, I don't know how someone like myself is finding out. I do know we don't have a locking differential in the back because it's not represented here on the screen, but let's just see what happens. 11, 12, 13 degrees. We've got the uh, parking warning lights going off. And let's listen for it. There we go, you hear that? Yes. You can see out here on the screen that we've got a uh, pretty strong incline. <gasps> And it's uh, showing that we've got some slip there on the right rear and uh, front left. What it's doing is it's actually using some brake function there um, to help uh, redirect power. Despite a little bit of noise though, which is totally normal for what it was trying to do, it moved us forward just fine. And I do think it's really fun being able to see the articulation of the wheels right here on the screen. So you really have a good sense of what the vehicle is doing. The Defender made really quick work of that articulation moment. And I suspect based on all the videos I've seen that uh, you could probably do some pretty gnarly off-roading with the Defender if you were so inclined. Let's get back on road. Hooray, we didn't break anything. Moving onward to emotion factor. Often when you're in something that's this capable off-road, it's also rugged on-road. But this has everything. It's luxurious on-road and off-road. You're right, off-road capability doesn't have to be loud and firm. And as I'm saying that, uh, it occurs to me that that might be our alter egos. Uh, <laughs> plush and rugged, switch to loud and firm. <laughs> 
I'll leave it to your imagination to figure out who's who. <laughs> Obviously, you're loud. <laughs> that was pretty gentle for somebody named Firm. <laughs> And I also think the styling inside and out is doing a lot to create an emotional uh, tapestry on which to paint your automotive dreams. I don't know why oh. I went there. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so yeah, I think there is some emotion here. What do you think? Are you feeling emotionally drawn to buy a Land Rover Defender of your very own? If you are, you might need to know what your current car is worth so you can sell it, or how much you should spend for your upcoming Land Rover Defender. If you want to know all that stuff, click the Kelly Blue Book pricing link in the description below. Remarks! Remark number one, infotainment. We've got an 11.4 inch screen. It comes standard with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Despite the fact that there are a lot of options available here, I still find it easy to navigate this infotainment system. Whatever I needed was relatively easy to find. Another aspect of the infotainment system I really like is the standard 360 degree camera system, especially with an off-road vehicle, having that kind of visibility around is really, really helpful. And now let's talk about the weird stuff that happened. Really one big item, the climate control. So when we had the Range Rover recently, it had this super bizarre behavior where you had to turn it all the way down, uh, almost to like max cold in order to maintain an adequate temperature. This is the exact opposite. And it's baffling that it's the same problem, but just the other end of the spectrum. In this one, if you have it in auto mode, even on 83, it's still blowing cold air at you. And then if you turn it up to max heat, then it goes into max heat mode and it's a totally different thing and then it gets hot. I haven't driven a car in the modern era where I wasn't able to just push a button, let it just do its thing and be comfortable. I don't know if this is specific to this one vehicle or if this is something other Defenders do. If you have any experience with the climate control in a Defender, tell us in the comments. Now it's time for everybody's favorite segment, the Museo family smell test. Our daughter does not like new car smell and we know some people might agree with her. Kiddo, how do you find the smell of this Land Rover Defender? Is it good? bad or just okay? Just okay. It's just okay. And did you hear she even took a big sniff at the beginning? And that was the Mizu family smell test. All right, let's talk engine choices. For the Land Rover lineup, the basic engine is a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder. Then there is a three liter turbocharged E supercharged inline six cylinder like we have in our tester. Then there's a five liter supercharged V8 also available. Max tow for the Land Rover Defender is 8,201 pounds. Sweetie. Yeah. Can I give you a trim recommendation? You can. Our trim recommendation is which Defender trim will give you the essential features you would regret not getting, but at the lowest possible price. We're gonna recommend the Defender S 110. For most folks, the 110 is right sized. That S trim comes with two zone climate control, a heated steering wheel, 12 way front seats, leather slash textile seating, an 11 speaker Meridian audio system, and smart key access. Grand total $58,300. By the way, for 2024, there are a few updates. There's a new P500 grade engine, which is a five liter supercharged V8. There's a new outbound 130 trim that ditches the 130's third row. It's like an Overland special. Lastly, you got higher base prices for all models. As for competitors, I think a big one is gonna be that new Lexus GX. If you're looking for a cheap and rugged alternative to the Defender, consider a Jeep Wrangler or hey, maybe a Ford Bronco like we own. And if you're curious about all the problems we've had with our Bronco, you can click right up here. Did we miss any remarks? If so, tell us in the comment section. Synopsis. In thinking about the essence of the Land Rover Defender, it offers the promise of adventure without any daily discomfort. To me, it is the stretch fit cargo pants of mid-size off-road luxury SUVs. <laughs> Family, I think we've done a good job reviewing the Land Rover Defender. May I have a five and a five and you come get your high five. Bam!